Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman. I'm a board-certified veterinary dentist, and we come to you every week on Wednesday to provide the veterinarian and the technician team some actionable things that you can use in your practice. And this episode is going to be a recorded episode that we've done in the past, not a podcast that we've recorded or not the Vet Dental Show, but actually some other information for you that we know you're going to enjoy. So sit back, enjoy, and we'll see you at the end of the podcast. Sarah, do you ever make a flap to visualize the root of the incisors in order to know where the root resorption starts? Well, that's a great question, Sarah. And as general practitioners, we have a ton of questions regarding tooth resorption in dogs, and that's why I put this in here. But even with all of our examples, there are numerous other examples that you want to expose yourself to in that there are a lot of questions involving this on an individual basis when you're doing your cases. So the more exposure you have, the better you're going to get. Answer to that is and was kind of ingrained within the discussion with this case that if we are looking at these radiographically, we don't always get the full extent of the absorption, especially in caps, which we talked about last uh, week. But we don't get that full extent of uh, appreciation until we actually do open that up in some cases. Now, with the incisors that we had as the example in this case, all of those were right up at the marginal bone level. They were pretty much nearly totally resorbed all the way up to that point. So that's when a true crown amputation is okay. And if it's a, if it's a small enough area, then those are really easy just to put a suture in to bring the two marginal gingival margins, if you will, together and close over the bone. Sometimes you would, uh, not very often with the incisors, but sometimes you would want to open up a flap and use your periosteal elevator to get some mobility for that flap to be able to close it in order to get down a little deeper in cases where you ha do have questions. And that allows you to see, is that bone or is it actually tooth? And if you remember back to that line of demarcation that we had on that first molar in the case, that many times is all you need. You open that up and it's pretty predictable that you're going to have a tooth uh, section that you can see clearly, and then you're going to have that interface, and then you're going to have bone. And so it's really easy to decide where you, what you're going to take and what you're going to leave. So hope, hopefully that answered your question. Uh, this is I'll answer this in a couple of different aspects. So uh, if you don't have the ability to take dental radiographs, it seems uh, a lot of these go unnoticed. And the, the answer to question is definitely if you don't have dental radiographs, you're going to be missing not only tooth resorption, which, which is non-clinical until it reaches the gingiva and starts to affect the crown uh, <clears throat> at, the, at the marginal bone crown interface. And we showed multiple examples of that in the case where you had that proliferation of gingiva and or that can be pulp as well that's in that defect and that's when it gets painful. So our goal, as we mentioned, is to stop that or, or intervene before that progresses to the point where it gets to the, where it is at that point where it's painful. So not having dental radiographs, you're going to miss not only that, but you'll miss a ton of other pathology. And when I, when I say a ton, I mean a ton. <laughs> you, you, you should not be doing dentistry unless you have dental radiographs, period. You're doing the patient a disservice by not having dental radiographs. And you're also setting your up, yourself up for legal issues if you don't have dental radiographs. So uh, one, of, one of the things that we see commonly is patients that have come in uh, for us because of some, uh, some perio uh, 
usually perio progression that goes uh, that goes unnoticed, where uh, the um, or, or that goes untreated. So the patient goes back multiple times. They get cleaning more frequently throughout time. Maybe they started at 18 months and it's now six years of age. And the teeth look really nice and they're really clean. And we might get that patient in right after a cleaning, a month to two months after the cleaning. And we take radiographs and there's tremendous bone loss and severe destruction requiring multiple extractions. So if you are in a practice where you do not have dental radiographs and you are at this meeting right now, today, you are one of the few people that want to get to the point where they're getting really good at dentistry. So that being said, I would either insist if you are an associate and you're at a practice where the owner makes the decision that you get dental radiographs. If you are a, an owner, uh, you would benefit tremendously from a monetary standpoint just in the, in the first six months after learning how to do uh, or interpret dental radiographs really well and how to do surgical extractions really well. <clears throat> so that long answer to a question, but it's a very important question. And if you are a general practitioner out there and you don't have dental radiographs, if neither one of those conditions exist, I would look for another practice that does. And so you are the ones that are going to be successful in general practice and dentistry. Don't let the lack of that ability to take full mouth dental radiographs on all your patients slip by and get to the point where uh, you're, you're just floundering with, without that diagnostic modality and your patients are suffering because of it. So Shauna, uh, how do you typically charge for partial extractions? Uh, it seems like a partial extraction would take a similar amount of time and that's, uh, that's pretty accurate. Sometimes they do, but we do charge, um, I don't think we charge as much as we do for extractions and our extractions vary based on a lot of factors and one is ankylosis which occurs a lot with external tooth resorption so uh, that would that would play a role uh, certainly if it um, if it's a case like I just described we may charge more uh, for for that just because of that or if it's maybe uh, just the crown and all we have to do is is do a true crown amputation and suture the gingiva uh, then it may be that that's all, um, that's all we need to do and we can charge a lot less for that. So it's all an individual, uh, it's all on the individual basis, it's all on, based on your practice, but mainly when we're doing these procedures, I think a good way to think about it with, with you in general practice, charge what you feel is going to take you that amount of time, charge your surgery fee for that. So if your surgery fee is say $400 an hour, and then charge $200 for a 30 minute, or what you think is gonna take you to a 30 minute procedure, no matter what it is uh, with dentistry. And it's, um, it's certainly a, it, it's an advantage it, the quicker you get. So I must qualify that because as you, as you learn, as you, as you make an investment in your time and investment in resources to learn veterinary dentistry through multiple exposures, through uh, mentorship, through uh, Facebook groups, all of which we have, <clears throat> then you're going to get quicker and you're going to be more confident and the flow during that dentistry procedure is going to go much, much better than it has in, in the past. So as you go along that journey, just because you get quicker doesn't mean you should drop your prices. Those prices need to be kind of tethered over time and you'll, you'll be able to gauge what you should be charging based on each situation as you get more experience. So don't, if you charge that amount for tooth resorption um, for that 30 minute procedure and you're fairly competent now but you're, you're not at the best, you could be even better, then 
again, keep that two hundred dollars, even if you get it down to fifteen minutes. You know, it's not. It's not. You're not punishing yourself because you're getting better. You want to keep that at the same level. So that that's one of the things. And Annie can uh, help you guys out maybe a little bit more in the chat. You uh, are interested if you're a veterinarian or a technician. Uh, you're certainly welcome to join her uh, Facebook group. There's, uh, I think there's 4,000 technicians in that group, and some, many of them are veterinarians, and she teaches all that uh, off and on, and you'll have an opportunity to post your cases in there as well. So feel free to do that. I hope you enjoyed this episode. There's a lot of actionable items in there that you can take and use in your practice immediately. So Put those to work and enjoy the benefits for the practice lifetime in your dentistry service. And if you would, please go to iTunes, leave a rating and review, take a picture of that with your cell phone, and then post it on the Vet Dental Show Facebook page. Just go to Facebook, search Vet Dental Show in the search in the upper left, and the show will come up. And once you post that, we'll send you a free instrument use essentials course. So if you want that free course, again, all you have to do is go to iTunes, leave a rating and review, take a picture of the rating and review with your phone, and then post it on our Facebook page, The Vet Dental Show. So until next week, have a great week. Take care, guys.